today on a subject, a simple subject, and the, and the subject is entitled um, Possessing and Re Releasing the Nature of the King. Possessing and Releasing the Nature of the King. Possessing his nature and then releasing his nature. Amen. Amen. And, and, and there are times that I want to come before you today and, and, and I, I want to preach about something. But um, the Bible speaks of, of five uh, different offices for ministry. It speaks of the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, and the teacher. Amen. And for some reason, the Holy Spirit has chosen me uh, to be a teacher. So I teach you the word of God, which I don't think that I'm in bad company. Jesus was the teacher. Uh, Paul was the teacher. And even the Holy Spirit is known to teach. Amen. So I think I'm in good company. So get your pens and your paper prepared uh, to take some notes. And we're going to teach on the subject, possessing and releasing the nature of the king. If you recall, I was teaching concerning the kingdom characteristic of faith. And we've been walking through the characteristics. And I'm on the faith issue, but I don't want to deal with the faith part tonight because I closed out with a statement. And the statement was that faith is my natural function. It is my natural function, and I reworded it this way. Not only is it my natural function, it is my nature functioning. Amen. The word natural comes from the word nature. It is my, my design to function. God designed for me to function by faith. God functions by faith. God had faith. Look at your name and say, God had faith. Amen. God had faith in the blood of Jesus. God had faith that the plan of redemption would work. God had faith that he'd be able to restore you and then you go out and do some work. That's the only reason you stayed through the mess that you went through because you could have died in your mess. But God had faith in you that after he filled you with the Holy Ghost, you will be able to do some work for him. Amen. Somebody say God has faith. God has faith. Amen. So it, not only is it my natural function, not only is faith is, I can walk through all of the characteristics as a matter of fact. Let me look at a couple of them. I can walk through them and realize that all of them is my nature functioning. Uh, integrity is my natural way of functioning. Love is my nature functioning. When I walk in love, that is the reborn nature of God in me. Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you were some mean scoundrels before you got saved? How many of you were selfish before you gave God your heart and he filled you with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Now if you're in the kingdom of God, you have a new nature. That don't mean you automatically live by it, but you have one. If you're born of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say being born again. Amen. Now that I have this new nature, I must learn of this new nature and then learn to live by this new nature. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Possessing the nature of the king and releasing the nature of the king. Write down our first point for tonight. First point for tonight. Point number one. I have the divine nature of God now. I have the divine nature of God now. And put now in capital letters and underline it three times. I have the divine, put three exclamation points behind it. I have the divine nature of God now. Not later. Now. Somebody shout now. Now, now sometimes we, we really need to deal with this point because sometimes we've been taught in ministries or in churches or in religion, that we'll get this stuff when we get the glory. Somebody say amen. amen. You'll get the eternal life. Eternal life starts then. You'll get the, the health then. You'll get, don't worry. Some of us so ready to leave earth because, don't get me wrong, heaven is a blessing, but some of us so re ready to leave earth just so we can leave our problems. That ain't a good reason to go. Hallelujah, somebody. If I am going to go, I am going to go in the way that God wants me to go. I ain't going to go because no problem ran me off. Amen. Amen. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more bills. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more sickness. When we get to heaven, there'll be no more backbiters. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't learn how to deal with the backbiters now, you might not get there. Amen. So you're so ready to get there because there won't be no haters there. You better learn how to love your haters now. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout, I have, I have it now. Write down this scripture. Don't even turn to it. Write down this scripture. John chapter 10, verse 10. Do you remember that scripture? The thief coming but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I come that they may have and have it more abundantly. 
He also says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. life. In another scripture, he speaks of eternal life. God is always bringing up the word life. And he's trying to get something across. What are you talking about, God? You keep bringing up the word life. You keep talking about eternal life, everlasting life. And we think it just means to live forever. But eternal life just can't mean to live forever. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Y'all scared to say hallelujah if you hadn't heard this part. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You want me to prove that it just can't mean to live forever. Amen. Number one. You are a spirit being. And no spirit dies. Amen. No, when I speak of dying or death, I speak of cease of existing. You're going to live forever somewhere. You're either going to live forever with God or you're going to live forever in hell. But you're going to live forever. So God just can't be talking about you living forever. He has to be talking about something deeper than you just existing forever. You will either live forever in pleasure or forever in pain, but you're going to live forever somewhere. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So what are you talking about, God? The word life, I told you the Greek word for it was zoe, Z-O-E, zoe. And this is what it meant, nature. The word life meant nature in the Greek, nature. God says that, that the thief coming but the steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have nature and that you may have it more abundantly, or my nature. I come that you may have eternal life or eternal nature. What do you mean eternal nature? Number one, in the book of Daniel, he's called the eternal one. It is a title for our king. The eternal one. Look at your name, say the eternal one. It's a title for him. So when he speaks of Jesus saving you so that you can have eternal life, Life, he's talking about not just you existing forever because you will, but he's talking about you receiving the very nature of God. You're receiving the nature of the eternal one. You're receiving the nature of the king. Everybody in the kingdom has to take on the characteristics of the king or get out the kingdom. If you're not going to function the way the king says function, then you'd have to go. That's why God said, know that a fornicator, a liar, a adulterer, and all these people that act like this, no, they would not inherit the kingdom of God. Because if you're not going to function like me, then I don't need you in my kingdom. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say I have his nature. Have now turn to 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to prove this, that you have it now. You have it now. Amen. 1 John chapter 2. And when you got it, shout, whoop, there it is. Amen. We'll wait on everybody else then. Amen. 1 John. You can find it right before 2 John. Right after 2 Peter. Amen. If you have it now, shout, whoop, there it is. Take a look at it very quickly. Now, we said the word life meant what? Nature. Nature. The Greek word for it was what? Zoe. And it meant what? Life, nature, amen. Life comes from the Greek word zoe, and it meant nature, amen. Now we're going to look at chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 24 and 25, amen. Look what it says, King James Version. Let that therefore abide in you that you have heard from the beginning. If that which we have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he promised to us, even, what did he promise to us? Amen. He promised. Now, in his nature is everything he is. I promise to give you all of me. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Amen. Now, now we've been caught up in the human nature. And you say, it's human nature to lie. Human nature to sin. But my question is, is that the original nature for you? Because some people that are listening to me now, some that are viewing by radio, by television, by internet, going to come up with a the question. They're going to write me. They're going to tell me that, that, that it's human nature. It's the atomic nature that, that we were born in sin, shaping it. I know the same scripture you know. I know that. But my question is, if it's the, the nature that we received from Adam to lie, then did Adam have this nature before he fell? Yes. 